guys, and welcome to Tetrabit Gaming. You may remember me from dumb Super Mario 64 challenges, such as beating the game as Giant Mario, Small Mario, and, who could forget, beating the game without touching the ground. Well, in this video, I'm back with yet another unconventional challenge. That's right, I'm gonna attempt to beat this game with just a Wii Nunchuck. Yep, that's it. Not only does this mean I have to play this game one-handed, but I'm only left with the control stick and the C and Z button, which I've mapped to the V and A button respectively. At the end of the day, this basically just means we are lacking the N64's C, R, L, and Z buttons, with the nunchuck just being a goofy peripheral. This means no long jumping, moving the camera, and of course, no ground pounds. So I've played this game a lot by now, and based on my knowledge of Super Mario 64, I can already foresee that some stars are going to be impossible. So while 120 stars may be impossible, I'll set the goal of this challenge to not just beat the game, but also get as many stars as we can. Anyways, with all of that fun stuff out of the way, let's grab a nunchuck and begin in 3, 2, 1. The intro cutscene starts off this challenge, Mario jumps out of the pipe as usual, and it's weird playing this game at normal size again. And off to the castle we go. Bob on Battlefield is of course first, and if you've seen my other challenges, you know I usually like getting the Chain Chomp star first. And there's the first star we can't get in this challenge, since it normally requires Mario to ground pound on the pole three times. Now wait, before you go typing away about bomb clips in the comments, I'm aware that method exists, but I've never been able to do it myself. So that's gonna be a no from me, lads, at least for now. Maybe I'll come back and try some more bomb clips later. Anyways, the fight with King bob was fine, as was the race with Koopa the Quick. I gotta tell you though, doing these jump kicks up slopes feels so awkward with the nunchuck. Getting 100 coins as well as the Mario Wings to the Sky Star were kind of annoying since without the wing cap yet, the coins in the sky were pretty tedious to keep getting. Why didn't you just wait for the wing cap, you might be wondering. Well, we'll get to that in a bit here. Anyways, with six stars down, let's press on. Also, by the way, I'm sorry for the janky input viewer, but wouldn't you know, I couldn't find a proper nunchuck input viewer, so this is the best I could scrap together myself. If any of you know where I can find a better one, please let me know. Anyways, in my last challenge, I completely forgot about the princess's secret slide until the end, so let's just get it out of the way now. Nothing crazy about the stars this time, twice down the slide, and that's two more stars in the bank. Womp's Fortress is next, and here is where we run into some more problems. Some of the stars are fine, like while jumping up to this one here, and I was even able to get this star cannonless. But the good news ends there, as without the option to ground pound, unfortunately it is impossible to defeat the Womp King up at the top here, as you need to ground pound his back three times. So there we go, the first truly impossible star of the challenge. And this starts a domino-like effect. Since we can't get that star, that also means we can't get the second stage of this course, which replaces the Womp King with the tower. So that's another star that we unfortunately can't get. And since we can't get that star, that means Hoot the Owl doesn't appear here either, meaning we have to get the star in the cage Owlless. It's thankfully still doable, but I'm not that good at doing this Owlless to begin with, and it was even more difficult for me without being able to move the camera properly. But with that star down, the red coins were alright, but it was just a bit tricky to jump up to the floating platforms, again due to the camera. <sighs> camera, camera, camera. I think I found something to complain about the camera in each of my Mario 64 challenge videos so far, and I'm sure it's not gonna stop here. Getting 100 coins here is still doable, but I now also realized that since Mario can't ground pound in this challenge, we can't activate the blue coin switches, which were a huge help. Bummer. Now up to 13 stars, I think we've already gotten the gist of how the rest of this challenge is going to go. For the stars that are doable, they may not be technically any more difficult to get, like we saw in my previous videos, but overall, they're just a lot more tedious to get without some of Mario's moves, and more so, without being able to move the camera. It might be hard to convey that in this video since it's all condensed, but for those that watch me stream this, you know the pain. And speaking of which, a really quick shameless plug, if you want to see me take on these challenges live, be sure to follow me over on Twitch. Anyways, now the light is shining down in the foyer, so let's go get the wing cap. Oh wait, we can't. 
Yeah, we need to zoom in and look up in order to go to the wing cap stage. But since we don't have any of the C buttons, this isn't possible. So scratch getting the wing cap as well as any of the stars that require it. Starting with the eight red coins there as well. Big oof on that one. Hopefully this doesn't impede us too much. In any case, off to Cool Cool Mountain we go. The slide was fine, delivering the penguin was also fine, really this entire course was just... normal. With nothing really to talk about here, that's a quick and easy 7 stars. It's looking like this video is going to turn out much shorter than my last few. After getting the star in the secret aquarium, Jolly Roger Bay was just like Cool Cool Mountain, very easy. Almost all of the stars here were easily doable, and I was even able to get the star in the jet stream without the metal cap for my first time ever. Yay, go me. The only star that's not doable here is the 100 coin star. Jolly Roger Bay only has 104 coins, I think the lowest out of any course, and unfortunately 30 of those come from the blue coins, which of course require Mario to ground pound on the blue coin switch. So to my dismay, we have to cross that star off our list. Now on to Big Boo's Haunt. I gotta admit, killing the boos here was a lot more annoying without ground pounding. Guess you really don't know what you have till it's gone. Anyways, the ghost hunts, merry-go-rounds, haunted books, and red, and 100 coin stars were all fairly easy and doable. The only star that we can't get yet is the eye to eye in the secret room star in the attic section of this course, since we need the vanish cap for it. Hopefully, that's something we can come back to later. With 33 stars in hand, enough to already open the second star door, things are looking good, so let's head on down to the first Bowser fight in the Dark World. The run up to the top was fine, but getting all 8 red coins was a bit tedious without being able to move the camera. And I may have fallen once or twice. But after a little bing bing and some wahoo, the first Bowser is out and we have our first key. So off to the basement we go. Like I said, we already have enough stars to open the next star door, but let's blaze through the other courses here first. So after catching Mips, let's hop into Lethal Lava Land. Again, the stars here are fine for the most part, but just like with the boos, without ground pounding, I was struggling a bit with all the bullies in this course. Other than that though, another quick 7 stars. Shifting Sandland is next, and again, most of the stars here weren't all too bad. But without being able to long jump, getting around the course here just felt like such a slog. On my way to getting all the red coins, I soon realized we have yet another problem. Now while the four red coins in the lower section of this course are fine, the four red coins floating in the air are gonna be an issue. Normally, as far as I know, Mario has to use the wing cap to fly around and collect these. I tried everything I could think of, from jumping off the pillars, to using the tornadoes and fly guys, but I just couldn't either get enough height or jump distance to reach any of them. And anytime I got even somewhat close, I would just fall into the quicksand and die. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to rule the 8 red coin star here as another impossible one, at least to the extent of my abilities. Next up, Hazy Maze Cave. Here again, almost all of the stars are fine and accessible as normal, but some just require well-timed triple jumps and dives since we can't long jump. The one star that was a pain here was of course the 100 coin star. So this course has 139 coins in total. Of those, 35 can only be obtained from the 7 blue coins which are spawned by the blue coin switch. That means every coin counts in this course for this challenge, so yes, I have to nickel and dime every swoop, scuttlebug, and Mr. Eye here. This Mr. Eye in particular was a big pain. Since there's no real room to run around him, I needed to get damaged and then use the invincibility frames to quickly get inside and then run tiny circles to make him spin out. I was in a sweat basically for the last 20 coins here, but eventually I was able to get 100 and add another star to the collection. Also, this course lets us access the Metal Cap Cavern, so we can also activate the switch there and get the 8 red coins for yet another star. After getting the freebie star from the Toad and catching Mips for the second time, it's off to opening the star door and jumping into Dire Dire Docks we go. You guessed it, most of the stars here are fine, if not easier than in any of the size challenges I've done. Unfortunately, getting the 100 coin star here isn't happening. The course has a total of 106 possible coins, 30 of which are obtained from blue coins. So unlike getting 100 coins in Hazy Maze Cave, 
Here it isn't just difficult, it's outright impossible. The other star that's impossible here so far is the star in the cage which requires the Vanish Cap to get. So speaking of which, let's go try and get the Vanish Cap. Well, there you go. Since we can't ground pound these platforms, there is no way to drain the water outside the castle, and therefore, no easy way to get into the Vanish Cap stage. I say easy way because I've heard there are some ways to somehow clip into the stage with the water still up, but this isn't a tool assisted run, so yeah, no, that's not happening. And I guess since we can't get in there to get the star and activate the Vanish Cap switch, that means both the previously unobtainable stars in Big Boo's Haunt and Dire Dire Docks are still, well, unobtainable in this run. So with that loss, to recap, that means so far there are 5 stars which I was unable to get. But hey, let's keep our chin up and now pay a visit to Bowser in the Fire Sea. Just like with Bowser 1, there really isn't much to say here. A quick trip up to the top, 8 red coins and another star, and another easy Bowser throw and the second key is ours. I guess it's a good thing I didn't just set the goal to beat the game with a minimum of 70 stars cause that would have been way too easy considering we already have 64. Now up to the second floor, let's first hit up Tiny Huge Island. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna stop saying most of the stars are easy and just focus on the ones that aren't. So if I don't mention a star, it just means it's easy or just as hard as normal, without much else to talk about. So with that said, first tough star is the 100 coin star, which is a surprising thing to say for this course since it has the most total coins out of any in the game. But, out of the 191 possible total coins, 10 of them are from the blue coin switch, and 55 are from the giant Goombas, both which can't be obtained without ground pounding. Now granted, there's still a lot of coins to collect, but it was quite a bit more difficult than normal since the giant Goombas usually are such a big help. The other impossible star for me was the Wiggler fight, and this is simply because, again, Mario can't ground pound on the top of the mountain to drain the water. And since that's impossible, that means we also can't fall into the cave to fight Wiggler. I know I've heard that there are some glitches that can be performed to clip into the mountain and then swim up to the warp box, but it's way over my head, so it's gonna be a no for me. On to Wet Dry World. Not much to say here, everything is fine, save for the one star in the small town segment of the course, which unfortunately requires the Vanish Cap to obtain. So strike another one off the list. Similarly in Snowman's Land, the star inside the igloo is also unobtainable without the Vanish Cap. That's some back-to-back -back oofs we got here. And guess what? This is another course where the 100 coin star is quite the challenge. This course has 126 possible coins, but of those, 20 are found stuck in the ice inside the igloo too. So just like in Hazy May's cave, we have to shake down every enemy for their coins. This was also tough since the coins from the spin drifts and money bags tend to often spread out pretty far, so I just had to take some extra care to not allow any of those to disappear. But luckily, I was somehow able to just squeak out 100 coins and get the star. After getting yet another freebie star from the second floor toad, it's now time to climb some mountains. And by some mountains, I mean this tall, tall mountain. Nothing crazy here. Even getting the 100 coins was fine since the slide segment has just so many of them. This run really makes me miss playing as Giant Mario though, where it only took like 5 seconds to climb to the top of the mountain. Ah, good times. Well, with two more courses to go, with 90 stars, that means we've gotten 75% of the game stars so far. Not too shabby. Before tackling the rest of the courses though, let's jump into the Wing Mario Over the Rainbow Secret Stage. And just as I expected, this isn't happening. Like at all without the Wing Cap. I mean, it's even in the name of the stage. Tick Tock Clock is always fun, or it is as long as I'm not constantly falling or bonking into walls. Anyway, the problem this course presents in this run is, you guessed it, the coins. This course has a total of 128 coins. 35 of them require the blue coin switch. Do the math, that means just like the one in Dire Dire Docks, it's unfortunately impossible. Rainbow Ride sucks. Man, I hate this course. Here again, getting 100 coins was a pain. There are 146 total coins here, but 30 require the blue coin switch. 
The problem with getting the rest though is that now it requires us to basically visit every section of this course in one go, which if you've played it, you know isn't a fun time with all the magic carpets and chances to fall off the stage. Yay. But with the rest of the stars in that course out of the way, we are now up to 104 stars with only one star in the final Bowser stage to go. Now I still haven't memorized all the red coin locations here, so for the longest time, I just couldn't find all eight. And that's because one of the coins is super hard to see from the default camera angle. Like I legitimately just couldn't see it, and it took falling at the right place to just barely get a glimpse of it and jog my memory. But with that last star in hand, let's go put Bowser to bed until the next challenge. Three quick throws and BAM! I have not only successfully beaten the game single-handedly with a nunchuck, but managed to collect 105 stars as well. Nope, I didn't forget. Before we roll the credits, let's go back and try to get the star behind the Chain Chomps gate in bub -omb Battlefield once more. It took me quite a bit to nail it down, and it was super awkward to pull off with the nunchuck, but eventually, I guess the bomb clip gods were smiling down on me, and I was able to squeeze through the gate and bring the star count up to 106. For this run, there's unfortunately nothing funny in the end cutscene this time, so let's quickly just recap all the stars that I found impossible for this challenge. We have the two stars in Womp's Fortress, the red coin stars in Shifting Sandland, the Wing Cap, Vanish Cap, and Rainbow Cloud stages, the four stars which require the Vanish Cap in Big Boo's Haunt, Dire Dire Docks, Snowman's Land, and Wet Dry World. The hundred coin stars from Jolly Roger Bay, Dire Dire Docks, and Tick Tock Clock. And of course, the fight with Wiggler. In conclusion, as I said earlier, this challenge wasn't all too bad, but just using the nunchuck and lacking any inputs for the C, Z, or shoulder buttons, many of the stars that were still doable were just definitely more tedious or required more precision, or just straight up were way more awkward to get due to using the nunchuck as the controller. After almost 7 hours straight of playing the game like this, my left hand is far from being comfortable. But with that concludes this challenge video guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. It wasn't nearly as difficult as some of my other ones, but I think it was still an interesting experience nonetheless. If you enjoyed this challenge and want to see me take on more dumb challenges like it, let me know what other runs you would like to see. DK Bongos, anyone? If you enjoyed this and haven't seen them yet, be sure to check out my other challenge videos by clicking on the card right here. And if you're new around here and want to stay up to date with me and the channel, be sure to subscribe here as well as swing by my Discord server and other social media things which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.